one very positive surprise of today is that the people were delighted by the fact that robots might actually enter uh, the construction industry, maybe even the building site in the future. And on the other hand, they were also very open and enchanted by the, let's say, architectural possibilities uh, of what these new construction systems kind of contain. This is a very exciting topic that I personally like very much because it brings many disciplines together. From architecture to hardcore mechanical engineering and also the dimension of social sciences when you think about acceptance of this new technology. So it's a truly interdisciplinary and very challenging research topic and I like these topics very much. The world of digital fabrication in architecture is in essence posing all the hard robotics problems that we have to solve. So they have to go out there and deal with, with environments that are not built for the robot, but the, the robot has to adjust to itself. We have a lot of interfaces from all different components that so kind of have to talk to each other. So the problem is not so much to get the process to work, that worked kind of fast, um, but the problems now were to have it so vast that we can actually present it in a demonst short demonstration, five minute demonstration. That's the balance, isn't it? I think uh, engineers might tend to overthink things and have the idea of how it's going to work perfectly and then when it works that way it's going to work for every problem ever. And that's an easy way that we start to think. And uh, I think the architecture culture and digital fabrication has been developed in a way that they want to demonstrate a process as quickly as possible to get it out there to the world. So these two sides combining, I think it ends up in a nice place where we want to come up with complete solutions to the problems, but at the same time make sure that it's focused enough that we can demonstrate it in a short amount of time. The last four months exposed to us the amazing complexity of this system. And this is also going to be one of the future challenges in the next three years, that we can handle this complexity while following our own research. If you want to do a demonstration, as you've seen today, of a robot kind of driving around and, and scanning the environment and putting a brick. You're easily writing several 10,000 lines of code or, or, or even more. There's a lot of components that have to come together and work together. There has to be an interface to the user, there has to be an interface to other systems. And all these are making the systems extremely complex, extremely difficult to engineer, and especially also to, difficult to engineer to the robustness that it requires so that industry will be willing to take them over and invest into them. The next wave of, let's say, industrialization of the building industry is certainly going to happen in prefabrication, where you have robots that can collaborate very closely in close interaction with humans. That can happen in a lot of, let's say, of the prefabrication industries in Switzerland. For example, you already have the wood fabrication industry, the timber industry, which is already well developed, which could now uh, even go further in that. At some later stages, maybe the robots one day might be on the building site. That's probably more in the future, let's say 15 to 20 years ahead. There's always risks in life. The risk can be that people feel displaced, that they uh, are afraid, that they lose uh, working opportunities. And here we have to counteract them by making them clear that this just creates more opportunities for intellectually more rewarding work. Mm -hmm.